today we're going to do a iPhone presentation uh, using Keynote, uh, GarageBand, and QuickTime. The first thing you want to do is open up your Keynotes and you want to set your slide size to 800 by 600. Uh, you don't want to go any bigger than that. You need to stay 800 by 600. It looks the best on the iPhone. Believe me, I've tried it several different ways and it holds more true than the rest of the sizes. So that's definitely what you want to do first. Um, the next thing you're going to do is you are going to, in your keynotes, um, uh, I used uh, option 8 to put bullets straight across um, just to see what the sizing is on the iPhone. Uh, you know when you turn it horizontally and vertically that the iPhone will work with QuickTime. So what this will allow you to do is to see where your cutoffs are. Uh, you might only be able to go to, uh, let's say, to to this third dot in which you can pull from your roller and make a marker and then you can go three dots in from the other side and that way you'll know that I can't go outside of this space otherwise when I turn my iPhone it's not going to pick it up. This is definitely a good way logistically to figure out uh, your setting and then from there on out when you make them you'll be able to know exactly what your margins are. I already have a presentation that I made um, which goes you know, through all the slides and does various things. Um, this one happens to have 39 slides. When you export this file, you're going to use fixed timing, which you're going to see if I go under share and use export. It's not the manual advanced at the top. It's fixed timing. And I found that probably between slides, the best is about 3.5. That gives people enough time to read and see the image without it going too fast and it also gives it, uh, it's not too slow that people are sitting there and being bored out of their head. Now when I export this file I'm not going to include any audio. Um, all audio that I do would be done in GarageBand which will allow me to do music and have voiceovers on top so I really don't like the recording ability of Keynotes. Uh, it doesn't give you a lot of uh, stuff to play with where GarageBand will allow you to do that. Okay, so from here we're going to export and we are going to go into QuickTime and QuickTime is going to allow us to see where we need to do all our voiceovers and such and then from there we'll go into GarageBand and then we'll go back into QuickTime again. Okay, now we're in QuickTime and we want to check through and make sure that the presentation is exactly how we want it. Uh, we want to make sure we have time to read everything, have time to visually see it. Um, that's why I, I like it set at 3.5. Um, otherwise, if you don't check it, it's a complete waste of your time because what we're going to do now is we're going to start figuring out where the voiceovers are. So if you don't like the, the, the way that your presentation's running and you go and set your voiceovers, well, you're going to have to change all your times and do it all over again. So now that we have our pieces all in place where we want them, we want to actually go and see and we're going to drag the marker here and I can see right, right, at, right at five seconds here I want my first um, intro voiceover to start talking. Then as I go and, and I drag this across I can see that web design wants to start right around 20 seconds. Um, that's where I want to start that voiceover. And you're going to do such all the way through and go through all your pieces and what you want to actually do is actually make like a little chart so that you can see your voiceovers and see what times they uh, occur. You also want to do this in minutes and seconds. Um, there's a reason for that in GarageBand um, and we will be going to GarageBand next. Okay, now we're in GarageBand and we've imported the audio and we've imported the voiceovers that we have already recorded and when we bring them in here we want to make sure that we click on the fifth icon that will allow us to adjust your track volume so that you can see that I've made the sound go down the first voiceover is just on top of the music here and then as we're doing different voiceovers I actually lowered down the sound track so that the voiceover is more prominent uh, if you click this this fifth icon here it'll allow you to, to adjust that track volume adjustment otherwise you're not going to see it anywhere and to make an adjustment you simply click on that which will give you a little ball there and then you can pull it down or up and you can add as many as you want 
then if you click on them again and you want to get rid of them you can actually just hit the delete button and from here you can actually play your piece um, you can just simply hit the space bar and it will start playing the music Welcome to SEOWebmasterDesigners.com Web Design We provide custom services that include planning, design and development, utilizing interactivity, and multimedia for first-time and makeover websites. Okay, so you can see there I just played that piece and how the, the volume went down for the soundtrack and it increased. Um, and it, but it'll always start at this marker. So when you hit the space bar, it'll start at the marker. And then if you hit the space bar again, um, it will stop the music. The other important thing is to do your time. Um, if you look um, under your control, you want to show your time in LCD. If you have this set for uh, your measures, uh, you can see that it's going to screw you up and it's not going to really help you with your timing because you need to have your timing according to what you just did in QuickTime. You need to know when your voiceovers start and stop and you can do that simply by pulling this. You can see the seconds um, down below. If I wanted to say let's do it right at 13 seconds I would move it there and then drag my piece and it will automatically stick to this marker when you drag your voiceover in. So that's the GarageBand piece. From here you want to go to Share and Export Song to Disk and save your MP4 file. Okay, now we're in the home stretch here. We're going to uh, open our audio and our video file. Um, our video has no audio in it. And we are going to simply copy our entire um, video file, Command-C and we're going to go in and move the marker right to the beginning and we're going to go under edit and we're going to do add to movie okay so now that's going to add that right into that movie um, right there um, you don't want to do it the other way around at all you want to copy your video and add it to your audio next thing we need to do is we're going to go under our file and we're going to do export for web um, what this um, what QuickTime is set up here is it, it's set up to produce um, three different movies um, which are going to load into your directory and they all need to be in the same directory uh, folder together and they will work together. If you want it to work for, with your iPhone and your PC um, you simply need to link your web page to your .mov file. Don't link it to any other file link it to the .mov and the QuickTime will decide whether you're on a on a uh, iPhone or whether you're on uh, a PC and it will make the connection appropriate uh, to whatever the user selects. hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have problems, uh, feel free to uh, blog me at seowebmasterdesigners.com and we'll see if we can help you out.